The Girl in the Spider's Web is the latest in the Dragon Tattoo franchise, this time starring Claire Foy as Elizabeth, previously played by Rooney Mara, and before that in the original Swedish film, Numi Rapace. This film follows Elizabeth as she runs away from computer hackers and government people because there's an evil program that can launch nuclear weapons and missiles everywhere and blow up the whole planet. A little bit of history about myself. I really love the Dragon Tattoo films, especially the original. Numi Rapace is still to this day, even after seeing this film, my favorite Elizabeth. I think she was brilliant, so good, and I really like David Fincher's film too, and Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig. The two original sequels weren't as good, but I did like them, and especially the extended, which I have here, which if you ever want to watch the extended, I would recommend that. It's a very enlightening experience. There's a lot of stuff they took out of those movies. And naturally, I was a bit disappointed that they weren't continuing what Fincher brought up, and Sony decided to just go in a whole new different direction instead of financing the continuation of what he so brilliantly started, and now we have a new version of Lisbeth, uh, directed by a new filmmaker, based off of a story that was not in the original authors. Um, and so, you know, it's all right. It's, it's kind of a James Bond movie. It's sort of like they're trying to make it more of an action film. Like, there's a scene where she's on a motorcycle, and she explodes off of this dock and lands on a frozen pond and just drives off on a frozen pond without breaking through the ice and the tires have perfect tread. It felt very much like a die another day scene kind of stuck in the middle of a dragon tattoo movie, which these films to me have always been very hard edged and very gritty. You feel almost dirty when you're watching it. You're supposed to feel kind of filthy. These stories have a lot of darkness behind them. And while this film does, in hints, that's about as far as it goes, a hint. This film feels considerably watered down, safer, and more sanitized than the original films. It's definitely a film that will appeal to more mass market tendencies in America. It's better as a franchise starter in that case because Lisbeth has become more of a superhero and less of an actual human being. And so I understand what Sony's trying to do. Uh, the David Fincher's film didn't make as much money as they wanted it to, and it took all of this time to make another one. So instead of just going forth with the really gritty and realistic portrayal that people seem to really like, we now have a considerably more fun movie where the audience can go, yeah, a lot. And that's not what I want to see. I want to go to one of these movies, and I want to leave feeling sad. I want to feel cold. I want to see nastiness. And that's not to say the film doesn't have dark themes. There are certainly things mentioned where you think that's disgusting and I feel bad for those characters because that happened to them. It's just that it doesn't go the places the other films did. We're supposed to progress, you know, we're supposed to push the boundaries, especially as we, we continue down the line of all these different versions of these movies. But instead they're almost retracting and, and becoming closer to almost a really hard-edged PG-13. Claire Foy is good as Lisbeth. I think she gave a lot of conviction to this role, and she certainly is not the problem with the movie. Neither is director Fede Alvarez, who I loved Don't Breathe. Uh, I really liked his Evil Dead remake, too. I bought both of those. I think he's a super, super talented director, and this is a visually stunning movie. It's really just the story and, and the, the direction the characters have been taken. And while I don't really see Claire Ford giving a bad performance, I think she's really talented. This is easily my least favorite portrayal of Lisbeth, Numi Rapace still being the best. I mean, she did so much of the stunt work. Rooney Mara pierced her entire body. I mean, there's so much dedication that has been given to this role. And this portrayal of her felt more like a superhero, which I have already said. This film seems to think that Lisbeth is cool because she's a super hacker and because she can look into a camera lens and go, mmm, I did it. I hacked your system and I wear black clothes. And this film like mistakes Lisbeth as that. Like that's why we like her. No, we like her because of what she's been through and because she doesn't give a shit. And this movie certainly has moments like that. This isn't to say this is a bad, necessarily, portrayal of her. It just didn't feel as real as the past two. So good performances, good direction, but a very lackluster story, and a poor direction that could fall on the producers or the studio for these characters. Mikael Blomquist is also in the film. 
And he has barely any purpose of being there besides we have to have him in the movie. His character feels very pointless and super inconsequential to the plot. He also looked younger than Lisbeth, which is weird. Like that's not the character. There was so much about him that was wrong in the movie. The actor's fine. It's just what they did with the characters. I'm gonna give the girl in the spider's web a C plus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews coming very soon this weekend. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.